So today we are going to start the uh, important topic that is uh, microwave amplifier design. So we just to keenly listen to this and uh, we are going to, so in case of a microwave amplifier, the part of the amplifier is microwave transistor. The transistor is supposed to operate fluently over the frequency. So we know that microwave frequency starts at nearly at uh, 3 gigahertz here and just before that uh, this is actually 1 gigahertz means even from uh, 0.5 gigahertz that is 500 megahertz to up to 300 here you can see this is close to 275 gigahertz 300 gigahertz is here so we can see that there are so many possible transistors can operate and can give sufficient gain as well as su sufficient operating frequency and the problem with the transistor is it will keep on be stable up to a particular frequency and after that it start to uh, degrade the gain and the gain when it is less than one so we can see that the gain when it is uh, less than one that means it can't even amplify after that it will start to attenuate so that is the problem in uh, uh, the transistor so we are not going to study in depth in transistor, but these are the facts behind the transistors. So what are the requirements we need for a good transistor is actually we need high gain and as low as noise possible. And there is a power capacity, which means power handling capacity. It's supposed to amplify one watt, 2000 watt or whatever. So these all things we can define in terms of microwave terms. <clears throat> the gain is defined as uh, S21. So the S21 is supposed to be greater than 1 minimum in order to operate minimum. So this value can go up to uh, 30, 40 like that. So these all corresponds to the 10 dB like that, 10 dB, 20 dB, 30 dB like that it will come. The S11 supposed to be as low as possible over the uh, given bandwidth. So which tells about the matched property. So this is actually gain. This is so in a two port network, you have port one and two. How much power is going from here to here? That is given by gain, which is nothing but S21. And the power reflected back is given by S11. And what about the opposite direction? The opposite direction, the signal should not flow in amplifier, which is nothing but S12. So the S12 is supposed to be very, very lesser than one. And what about the output uh, S22? S22 also supposed to be as low as possible from that uh, one. So this also, so this, uh, this is what we want, this value greater than one. So these are the minimum things you have to keep in mind that S11 and S12, S22. So these all value will be less than one. But in case of S21, it's supposed to be greater than one. Greater than one minimum requirement for a uh, transistor in order to operate uh, properly in for the microwave amplifier application. Okay, so in case of amplifier, this is the simple architecture of an amplifier. So this is the um, amplifier and the amplifier's S parameter is known and it is having system impedance or characteristics impedance of Z0 and the incident and reflected components are mentioned over here. So these are the powers available in different uh, locations. So from the source, microwave power is coming and it is given to the input. So it depends on the reflected power, remaining all power will go as the input. So this power is equal to one minus of the input reflection coefficient square into this power available. So that much power will go inside, that will be amplified and after the amplifier, this is the amount of power available after the amplification. So what is this power is equal to, this is nothing but S21 square into this P input. And this power will be delivered to the load. So load is also having load reflection coefficient. So this power PL is nothing but this power available from the network into one minus the reflection coefficient square. So from the source to the load, 
how much power is actually going from here to here that is all characterized by different gain the very important one is the transducer gain which tells about how much power is going from the source to the load so that is what the entire transducer gain that is the overall gain of the amplifier and then the power gain this is the uh, very common in industry people will follow how much power we are giving as a input and how much power is delivered to the load so that is uh, but for the fundamental applications we often use this uh, transducer gain which is often defined as gt so this gt will keep on will come and this gt profile over the frequency will be like this this is frequency and gt so this will be keep on increasing and decreasing like that will come we can see that there is a maximum possible value this is called a gt not in some books they will mention as gt max so in poser he uses uh, gt not in some other books you can find gt gt max so our our uh, uh, expectation is we have to achieve this maximum gain as much as possible for a given uh, transistor so here there is a derivation tells about how to calculate the gains for a given amplifier these two equations you remember how it has come this is taken for a simple two port network and the corresponding gamma is gamma l values are known we are going to substitute in this two equation when we solve that we can see the gain value how to get it you can simply follow the uh, derivations from the slide you can easily understand that and from that you can calculate the power gain which is nothing but power delivered to the load divided by uh, the available sorry input power given to the trans uh, amplifier so this is the power gain and the very important uh, the transducer gain is available so this is the transducer gain it look very big formula because it is accommodating both source reflection coefficient as well as load reflection coefficients as well as transistor cs parameter is also coming and the transistor reflection sorry amplifier reflection coefficient is also coming into the picture how to understand this so this we can understand by dividing the terms like this so here what you are seeing is nothing but the input term which tells about how how far the amplifier is matched to the input side and here it tells the matching at the output side so these two are telling about the matching property here as well as output matching and this is nothing but the term it is nothing but the intrinsic gain of the transistor and once the transistor is fabricated what people will do the transistor is fabricated and we know its iv characteristics id vd so the transistor characteristics will be available then we have the load if the if the load is real value then we will be having the load line will come this load line is meeting at different points these points are called q points so we will pick up any particular q point where it is available in the active region once we have selected we can choose any point whatever the point we like we can choose once this point is chosen then we will measure the s parameter so this is the s parameter and in this s parameter s21 is nothing but the transistor gain so once the transistor is fabricated for the given bias condition vds the transistor gain is also fixed so we can't even change so in order to build a amplifier what are the possible things we can change is the input matching network output matching network if we properly design then we can easily get the uh, entire amplifier design done so the amplifier design means what it, it means the design of the input and output matching network how far how better we can get the input and output matching network where this value is fixed so how to achieve this uh, input and output matching network so for this we are going to use uh, smith chart to design the matching network using 
single stub matching network we are going to design that so that is what the entire thing about the uh, amplifier uh, 